would like to uh, uh, announce the speech speech of Mohammed Yunus Fitra. He is uh, recently, he has recently graduated from MA program in International Studies in University of Pannonia Kusek campus uh, in January 2022, after which he received a research grant in, at IASC and uh, upon finishing his secondary education in Indonesia, he received Turkish government scholarship to pursue his bachelor degree. Uh, and uh, in 2019, he received Hungarian government scholarship stipendium Hungaricum to study MA program uh, here in lovely Kuseg. And uh, the title of his presentation is uh, Facebook in Myanmar, Dangerous Speech uh, and its Role in, uh, in the Conflict, uh, Rohingya. Uh, he will tell us about uh, this a little bit more. Thank you, Yunis, for being here. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, I hope that this presentation sort of give a, a sort of act like, like a, as an example of what uh, Professor uh, Kavan and Professor Skelly uh, has been saying regarding uh, algorithm. Uh, okay. Uh, ah, okay. So, yeah. Uh, so my uh, focus is how how Facebook uh sort of contributes to exacerbate the, the conflict of uh, Myanmar and the, the Rohingya conflict in Myanmar so I, I would like to start with uh who are the the Rohingya ethnic group they are a Muslim minority group that reside in Rakhine state in Myanmar uh they are uh, now stateless they are not given uh, citizenship by by the Myanmar government which uh, the UN uh, addressed them as the most persecuted minority in the world. They are subject to multiple uh, military crackdown and communal conflicts. The most uh, severe of which was uh, in 2017, in which it, it which in which it resulted in about 20,000 uh, deaths uh, from the Rohingya side. And uh, now, uh, as a result of that, uh, around one million live as, as refugees in, in Bangladesh, while. Uh, 300,000 uh, are living internally displaced uh, within Myanmar. Uh, so uh, to introduce uh, the Myanmar uh, media landscape, uh, Myanmar was under authoritarian rule from 1962 to 2010, in which there is there was a tight restriction and censorship on media. One of the world's more restricted, more restricted uh, media system with multiple laws restricting the media. Uh, uh, as, as for the people, there was uh, like a highly low cell phone usage in which only North Korea had lower cell phone per capita and uh, SIM cards price can reach up to $2,000. And before uh, 2011, only 1% of the population had internet access. But uh, in 2010, uh, starting from 2008, there was uh, some kind of uh, revolution that uh, ignited uh, the calls uh, for... Uh, uh, nationwide liberalization on economic, political, and media uh, undertaken by a new civilian government. And most importantly to this uh, topic is the liberalization of media landscape, uh, which include unblocking access to foreign media and ending pre-publication of media censorship. So suddenly uh, the the nation was introduced to, to a whole new world of, of uh, of uh, telecommunication. Uh, in 2015, it was the fourth fastest growing telecom market and uh, from 1% in 2011, it jumped to 46% uh, by 2022. And uh, the, the kind of uh, clear uh, winner in this uh, kind of uh, digital uh, transition is, is, uh, was Facebook. Uh, at the time, as the as the the country was uh, was introduced to to a new whole uh, ranges of of smartphones, uh, cheap smartphones, uh, which most of them had this uh, Facebook application uh, pre-installed uh, in it. Uh, so the 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 people sort of first experience uh, with the with the internet uh, equates uh, with the digital communication equates uh, for Facebook. Uh, so it becomes sort of a primary source uh, for news for, for a lot of people. 
in which 60% of internet users list Facebook as its primary source, source of news, be it, be it uh, official news or be it uh, non-official news. Uh, it's also uh, supported by uh, Facebook uh, aggressively trying to chase the, the market share uh, in Myanmar, uh, in which they introduced this uh, free basics uh, program that uh, the uh, Facebook was was available available for uh, for free uh, that they didn't have to to uh, pay uh, mobile data uh, to access. So it it kind of opened a whole new uh, world of of uh, digital communication and and, and uh, technology. Uh, and and it uh, transformed the the way people uh, consume uh, news and and uh, uh, have some kind of uh, discussions. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it also opened as a, as a platform uh, to sort of uh, exacerbate the already existing uh, ethnic tension, and it also uh, coincides with the rising uh, Buddhist uh, ultra nationalist uh, sort of sentiments. Uh, and and in, in in many cases, uh, this uh, Facebook has been sort of uh, facilitating or like uh, used used as a, as an instrument uh, that kind of translates from from the virtual uh, world to to the to the real world. In 2012, for example, there was a, a campaign to boycott Muslim-owned business uh, on Facebook. Uh, to encourage Buddhist uh, people to put stickers on their stores to indicate that they belong to Buddhists and not Muslims. Uh, in 2014, uh, there was some uh, Facebook post uh, shared by uh, multiple influential people of uh, false rape accusation that lead to uh, riots. And in, in the 2017, uh, uh, in, in the peak of the, of the conflict, there are 100,000 Facebook posts related to head, uh, head speech. Uh, in which more than uh, 150 highly influential accounts uh, that are actively uh, trying to uh, like actively contributed uh, to this to this issue. Uh, one perhaps most uh, high profile uh, of of the of of the issue is is uh, the monk uh, Ashin Wiratu. Uh, who was a Buddhist alternationalist figure who was uh, very active on Facebook with uh, half a million uh, followers uh, before his uh, account was suspended. And uh, the Buddhist alternationalists, they, they uh, utilize Facebook as a, as a kind of uh, platform uh, of their uh, contents uh, against uh, the Muslims and the Rohingya. For example, they, they uh, proliferate the issue of uh, existential uh, threats they they cite uh, high birth rates of of uh, Muslims that pose uh, sort of existen existential uh, threat uh, to to uh, Buddhism uh, and this uh, Buddhist uh, core of of the nation, and they also uh, paint the picture of uh, Muslims as, uh, and the Rohingya as personal security uh, threat and also economic threats because they, they believe uh, the, the Rohingya to be to be illegal immigrants that, that came uh, illegally to uh, to Myanmar to, to cultivate uh, the land. Uh, so so the, the the question is why why this is uh, very uh, powerful uh, this uh, spread of uh, news on Facebook why why is it so powerful? Uh, firstly some well-known uh, Buddhist monks are uh, at the forefront of this uh, movement, and and people uh, see this uh, message as uh, uh, kind of uh, some version of truth because they see they think that uh, they believe that uh, monks are more uh, perceptive of, of the true nature of things than common people. It's also corroborated by how the Myanmar state media uh, also echo. Uh, similar sentiments regarding regarding uh, the Rohingya, for example. So it adds to their validity. For example, how they how they narrate uh, the Rohingya as, as illegal immigrants coming from uh, the British colonialism era, and also uh, related to what uh, the discussion that we have uh, said before is that uh, the Facebook algorithm by itself it uh, creates sort of uh, echo chamber in which. Uh, the the users' uh, preferences are are reflected, so the users keep seeing uh, this uh, majority uh, uh, narrative uh, because this uh, type of content is most likely to maximize uh, users' uh, time on the site.
Uh, and one very uh, important uh, findings uh, from one, one very important uh, research regarding uh, the patterns of Facebook users in Myanmar uh, by uh, Witten Woodring, Kellenberg, Tuang, uh, Tong Mung, and Setsar, uh, which they conducted as a, as a very wide and very representative uh, interviews and uh, focus group discussions. Uh, of Facebook users in Myanmar. Uh, majority of the people uh, uh, see Facebook as sort of news and they believe in the authenticity of Facebook news because they say that uh, in a country like Myanmar in which uh, high censorship of local media, so they believe that it is authentic because it's able to bypass this uh, censorship by local media. Uh, they, uh, the majority of the people consume a lot of uh, varieties of sources of news, including non-official news from, from influential people, from their friends, from their family, uh, official local and domestic news, uh, and also, interestingly, international media in which it was opened uh, by the government. But at the same time, they have this kind of, kind of bias, kind of uh, selective e exposure, they they disregard that whenever the international media has has uh, accounts on on the Rohingya crisis that that sided with the Rohingya people, so in a sense they do not use Facebook to challenge uh, the viewpoints of the government narrative uh, of the Rohingya crisis in a meaningful way. They simply disregard them, disregard the information as as biased. So they have this kind of selective uh, selective confirmation of, of, of news of what they want to see, which is also supported by Facebook algorithm by itself. Uh, they also find a pattern of less sophisticated uh, fact-checking in majority of the people uh, in which they corroborate, uh, they uh, kind of prove the story uh, only asking friends, family or simply their uh, intuition. And most interestingly, I think uh, the most of the responders uh, also kind of uh, have this uh, common negative narrative about Rohingya, uh, illegal migrants, damaging local economies, members of international Islamic group, and etc. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Facebook uh, response. Uh, they are being criticized to slow to remove inappropriate content, but uh, they also admit its role uh, in Myanmar violence. And after the peak of the crisis, they uh, announced that they would take uh, this issue more seriously, such as uh, most, inter uh, most importantly increasing the number of uh, language content reviewers, working with uh, experts of from civil society organization and human rights report. Uh, so uh, this uh, media liberalization uh, definitely opened a window for, for this uh, issue to, to exacerbate. Uh, while Facebook uh, did not create it, it, it served as a, as a as a platform, so it's uh, it's also uh, directly uh, uh, caused this issue to, to worsen. And uh, f based on this finding, it's uh, interesting how Facebook users are, are exposed and in some uh, kind of way proliferate also the common negative narratives of the Rohingya people. Thank you very much.